Well, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. So, it is very early out as you can tell. Mornings are just dark these days, so are evenings. Anyways, we got a lot of work to do. Gotta install the boiler system for my radiant floors and Legarm just got done doing his. So he's helping me get mine put together. So, I gotta grab some tools in the shop here, head over there, get things lined up, and we're gonna get to town on that. And uh, also today's video is brought to you by Reolink Security Systems. So, I'm excited to talk about that in a minute. Okay, let's get going guys. So we got this heater that a uh, buddy of mine let me use for my house. That thing right there works really well. A little chilly outside, tiny bit of snow on the ground. And uh, I'm over here at Nick's place and what we're gonna do is we're going to work on his radiant floor heat. So we're gonna put his manifold in. It's a stainless steel manifold. We'll get that tied up. And then we'll figure out where we wanna put the top manifold for his garage. And then we'll run all the lines from his garage to that manifold. And then while we're doing that, we'll figure out how we want to do the manifold and tubing and the water separator and the fill port and all that good stuff on that wall. And that's what we're going to try to work with. So he got uh, a lot of stainless steel valves and uh, fittings. So we're going to go ahead and use a lot of that stuff instead of brass because brass is super expensive. Oh my goodness, has it gone up. I used brass, it wasn't quite as bad at the time, it was about a wash between the stainless steel and brass, but now stainless steel is cheaper than brass. <laughs> crazy, absolutely crazy. So anyways, there's a bunch of goodies in this box, and I need to grab all these goodies and lay them out and get it figured out exactly what we got going on. So since he's got a two zone setup in his house, he doesn't have any different zones than that. And what I mean by zones is that means for example, all of his garage is one zone. That's just one, one heating unit. All of his basement is another zone. So we're having two pumps. So one pump for each zone, which is uh, gonna be awesome and it works really well. And then technically this has three pumps in it. One in the boiler, one for each of the zones. Anyways, you get the idea. Lots of stuff. Okay, we've got everything laid out, and so far it looks like everything is here, except for there's one issue. Somehow, when we ordered your water sep or air separator from the system, this has got those crush fittings for your uh, um, copper lines. It's got a little O-ring. We don't have that tool, and I was hoping this is threaded, but we're gonna try sweating that and see how it goes. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, so I guess we'll have to just buy another one. But uh, we'll see how it goes. That's the just only money. problem. Yeah, it's just money. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of money tied up in this right now. But when it works, it's pretty awesome. And my house, so far, everything's been working great. And it is awesome. I am, I love the radiant floor heat. So anyways, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take one of his manifolds. We're gonna take this bottom one is for his basement. And we're gonna take it and mount it on the wall, hook up the lines, and then we'll figure out where we're gonna place this top manifold, get that figured out. And once that's done, then we can go through and start figuring out all the fittings where we need to place it, cut the copper tube, and sweat everything, and yeah, all that good stuff. But how he has it set up, it's basically reversed from my house. So his boiler's sitting here, which means all of his run and everything is gonna be on this side. So we gotta reverse everything on this side than what I have. So it's gonna be a little kind of a mind twister. My boiler would be technically right here, and my manifold system is right on that side, so. He wants to do everything backwards. I don't know why, but he just wants to make things complicated. But yeah, I think it's gonna work out great. So we just gotta figure out how we wanna do these, these uh, runs and yeah, good deal. <laughs> Basically, from my understanding, this is how it works. You shut the valve off so you don't burn the seal, and I'm putting it in water with a towel wrapped around on it so it keeps the cool around the bell valve so it doesn't burn the seal. And that cold water will protect that. 
now I'm heating it up and I got flux on there and I just put solder in it until I get it, I guess, soldered, which is called sweat. There you go. Well, good deal. We're uh, we're making pretty good progress. Have one last uh, joint to sweat, and that's right here. And then everything else should be basically together, except for the pressure tank. We got to put the pressure tank on the system, and uh, then we can then we got to run the lines to the garage from the radiant floor, and then pressurize the system, make sure there's no leaks, and if there's no leaks, coolant. Awesome, good deal. So let's uh, let's sweat that. Well, now that Leg Arms has done all the work for me, everything. Wait, no, it's not done yet. Never mind, take that back. We'll keep it working. We're gonna get the PEX ran for the garage. This is all pretty well tightened up. Still a couple items we gotta do there, but now we're running PEX through the wall. He's gonna run him along the foundation, and we're gonna hopefully, if it all goes to plan. <laughs> oh, there it is, right there. I'm gonna take this little doohickey here, run along this thingamajigger, climb up this willy, and then this is gonna go through right there. But I think he's gonna start on this side first. So I'll just put that through like that. Can you push it in? How far? Um, hang on a second. Push, don't. Jam it, push it. There we go, got it. Now let me crimp it. That yeah. one's done. Okay, we can pull it through. All right, guys, let's show you a security system that we've been using here on the farm since 2020, believe it or not. So around four years ago, we decided we wanted to increase the video surveillance within inside of our shop as well as outside and our whole farmyard, all the houses and everything. And we wanted a central unit that we could access remotely through our phones, computers, wherever you're at, and that everybody on the farm can have access to so we can all share the same security system. Well, that's where Real Link came in. And this system has been amazing. This is a, one of the cameras here. Two-way audio communication, 4K video, night vision, pretty awesome. So the system, it's all wired for inside your home and you can put up up to 16 channels, 16 different cameras. We've got them all over our shop, inside and outside. And I've been using a system almost every day, whether to see when dad's at work, so I know when I need to get there, or when leg arms leaves work, so I can be like, yeah, I guess it's time to go home. He left, I can leave too. We put one of these systems in my brother's house, in our lake house, in our shop, and this one here is going to my future house, which is being built right now. Probably the biggest selling point for this system when I was doing research on what system to buy four years ago was the app. Everybody said the app is simple and easy to use, quick, responsive, and yeah, it's good. Especially the smart detection. The smart detection is your camera's ability to use software that can say, hey, that there is a car, okay? So instead of literally sitting there and having to like put everything in high speed and watch hours of footage till you see something happen, it highlights moments where activity has been taking place. And that way you can just go back to those spots and be like, bam, oh, look at that. And you just never know what you might record on your camera. A couple years ago, I caught a meteor. Well, didn't quite catch it. I caught the light from it, lit the whole sky up. I happened to be out that night. So I went back on my security system, found the footage and bam, there you go. That's from a meteor, the size of a Volkswagen bug flying into Canada somewhere. Or it might be this little accident that happened out in our street. Oh my. Yeah, that didn't go very good. Or it could be something as sad as say, a hailstorm when you're on vacation, watching remotely. We've done this twice now. And if for some reason you can't get a wired connection to your camera, don't worry because we have one of these, a solar panel with mounting hardware. So put some on the side of your building somewhere, fence post, wherever you need it to be, and grab one of these. This is a 360 camera, able to tilt up, tilt down, night vision. I think it has two-way audio and wireless. This plugs into that solar panel with a battery pack inside, keep it charged up, and then you can get video surveillance without having me connected to your network video recorder. 
The Real Link systems are great at engineer security, whether outdoor, indoor, or off grid. So if you're interested in a security system for your property, head to the link in the description below and check out Real Link and their smart security cameras. I highly recommend them. We've been using them for a while now and we'll continue to use them for a while, especially in the new house. Can't wait to get them up. And back to work we go. If you notice, it's got coat, typical hoodie, and gloves. I'll, sh I'll show you what, what, what's going on here. It, it just makes so much sense because tis the season. It's the white glow. Whew. It is currently hovering just above single digits Fahrenheit. So we're at around 11 degrees. Here's my snow drift that I've got going on here. Planned it perfectly with that Canadian wind as it comes through from the northwest. It'll make this big snow drift right here. So when we build the deck, we'll be able to jump off the deck into the snow drift. Don't doubt that. I've got teenagers coming in a number of years. I see that day coming. Don't tell mom, because I might do it too. Ooh, sliding door. All right, where were we? And number two. And number three. Number four. Five. Seven. And eight. Okay, we uh, finished running all the PEX tubing from up in the garage, and that's hooked up to that manifold. And uh, we're charging the system with air to see if there's any leaks. Now, we still have to put the expansion tank to the system. There's just two fittings we're missing. We gotta go in town to get that and grip them on. But other than that, it's all basically plumbed together and hopefully we don't find too many leaks. <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be some. It's a lot of sweating and a lot of threads to not have a leak. And if we did it perfect with no leaks, we need to do this for a perfection. Per profession. Perfection. Perfection, there you go, not perfection. A little one right there. Itty bitty one. Oh! Oh! Not doing too bad so far. Now granted, we're sitting at about 18 PSI is what we have it at right now. Now what I like about this gauge, and the reason why I went with this, is it's got two, two gauges in one. You got a temperature and you got a pressure. So then that way you know exactly what your pressure is and then your temperature when you're running your boiler just to see if there's any problems. If some reason the boiler is running uh, different pressure, not pressure, but different temperature than your gauge, then you can come diagnose problems down the future, you know? And plus the other thing too is to find out the temperature, you kind of have to go through a couple settings. Here you can just look at the gauge. That's kind of nice. And why not have a mechanical gauge? Seems like uh, the most logical thing and I just talked something over its anti -seas. There we go. Put it back. Back down in the mechanical room today. Forgot my hat. So you'll have to deal with the shiny head. It's like seven to nine degrees Fahrenheit, something like that outside. So I got that green thing running back there. Cooking the place, so it's at least nice in here. And finished all this up, the pressure tanks in. We put a pressure test, set it at 20 PSI. It went all night and it's still 20 PSI. So I would say we are good to go for fluid. I gotta get the venting though for this boiler. So right now I'm doing the intake. So I'm running it up and over and up, drilled two holes there. Intake's gonna go up. Exhaust, I'm waiting on some CPVC pipe to come. It's a kit, because they need a higher temp PVC to withstand this 30 inches right here. And then from there I can run schedule 40 up and out. So that's gonna be here tomorrow. So I'll hopefully get that all buttoned up. I'm still waiting on a sensor for that unit. But I gotta run to town and get a fitting because I somehow missed it when I put my order in. So I gotta go get some more. Ooh, I do love this door. Do love this door. It is tall for eight feet, but it doesn't feel that tall. But it is nice. I am gonna cry when the first scratch gets on it. Ooh. I should be deer hunting. That's what I should be doing. Should be deer hunting. Three inch holes drilled there. That's gonna be exhaust. That's gonna be vent. We're running up inside the two by six wall here to the attic. Where then I'll vent it out the roof and in a very convenient spot here. Got my Milwaukee M18 running this thing. This is a three inch saw, hole saw, and it likes to break bits because something's bent somewhere in the hole saw. 
and it wobbles the bit and snaps it. I've broken two already. So, once I get it started though, if I go real slow, then the whole saw will stay in place. Should I get a different hole saw? Yeah. Am I gonna get a different hole saw? No. But at least I got the Milwaukee. Makes it that much more better. Got it, got it. Oh yeah. There's a hole. All right. Shove the PVC up. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Ah, one down. And five to go. Okay. This is uh, the next day after we pressurize it. And uh, so far, it's looking pretty good. So it's, uh, it's just shy of 20 psi, and it's held, and that's exactly what we want. So now we're ready to put some coolant in it. So I had to go get a clean bucket, like so. I washed it out over at the shop to make sure it's clean enough. And this is gonna be to try to get um, air bubbles out of the system, and this is why we're using a bucket. Now I've got these two valves right here. They connect garden hoses or washer machine hoses. And that's what we're using as washer machine hose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run one from the return into the bucket. Then we're gonna run another one from here to the pump to the bucket. So the pump is gonna pump out of the bucket, pump it into the manifold and circulate it. But before we do this manifold, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to do this zone in that zone separate. We're gonna open each individual valves to make sure that we get all the air burped out of the system. And then we'll do the center here. And it takes a little bit of a process, but well worth it to take the extra time to get it done right. Because otherwise you're gonna have air bubble in the system and here's the problem with air. Anytime there's air, it's gonna start cavitating on the pump or getting an air pocket and it's not gonna circulate the fluid like it needs to. And it's gonna gurgling and heating won't be correct. It's gonna get air pockets inside here when it's heating and you don't want that. You don't want to get this thing too hot. So you want to get all the air out. And that's why we have this purge right here. Well, actually it's air separator is what it's called. And the way it's designed is the fluid goes through here, circulates and swirls, and somehow it separates the fluid and the air. And then they got a little valve here and you just crack it open. Like, listen, you can hear that. And then that way, if you're running the system and you want to just kind of check and see if there's any air pockets and you turn it off. Now, what's pretty neat about this system is you can't even tell that these pumps are running. You can't hear them. They're just so quiet and I love that. What you do hear is the boiler running, which is not a whole lot of sound either. So it's a very quiet system and really awesome. So yeah. Okay, it looks like Nick's got the pump ready to go. We'll take this end here, and screw it onto here. Like so, we're gonna need that other hose. Once I get the thought out, we'll put it over here. Now, um, we got this really nifty tool, this thing right here. You put it in your 55 gallon drum, you add air to the drum and it pushes the fluid through the tube and we're gonna use that to push, put in the bucket because I don't want to be circulating a bunch of contaminants in this drum eventually if you ever have any extra because then we could use this stuff for over at the shop and you'll have contaminants in it so we want to keep it separate. Make sense? Yeah, I hope so. All right. I think we can move this drum closer or we can have to bucket it. We can move it closer. We can move it. Yeah, we'll move it closer. Best way to eat house. So we're only running fluid through one run. Right here is a little side glass and it's got a little gauge on it so it can tell how much uh, pressure is going through it when the system's running. You'll actually see that thing start to fill up with coolant when it's finally reached it, but we got to go through quite a bit of fluid. And, and if I remember correctly, I went through about six gallons a run on mine, but I had five, uh, five eighths runs. He's got half inch, so it might not take as much for him. He's got more runs than I do, 
but a little smaller too. I went through a whole entire 55 gallon drum and I had maybe four gallons left, so we'll see what his does. There you go. Well, there, I just went through and I think purged the majority of the air out of the system. So I've got it at about 15 pounds right now on system, 15 PSI. No air coming out of there. So the pressure tank's got pressure in it. Everything's got water in it, or fluid, I should say, coolant. And uh, there, I'm sure there's still some air bubbles here and there's some pockets. When we get the boiler running and it starts running the system and the fluid starts going in circles, there's gonna be a lot of bleeding. This is like what my brother said, so we'll get to that. But I think I, it didn't use as much as I thought it was gonna be. We figured it'd be the whole barrel, and it, it probably used three quarters of it, but that's probably because this was half inch lines and his was five eighths, so that makes a difference. We'll see if it heats the flooring differently. I don't know. Why'd we do different? what the concrete guy did so I don't know it's all good though half inch should be fine feels good that system looks spectacular so now he's got to finish getting it vented powered and all well, the gas is ready and then we can do it but I got to get the thermostats installed the probes and the slabs and a bunch of other stuff so let's get to it well I'm sure you guessed it still in the mechanical room there's still a lot to do in here but this is pretty sweet. It's maintaining pressure, 15 pounds. So all this, zero leaks. We are good. And I just finished putting in the Schedule 40 CPVC high temperature capable pipe for the 30 inches they require out of this unit. Then it goes to Schedule 40 PVC and up. And then I did the Renai as well. So now this one's got both the Schedule 40. That manual on that said it can take PVC for both the intake and exhaust as long as it's Schedule 40. So this one though was the only one that required that CPVC and that's hard to come by in these parts. I had to order it off the internet. So I got them all hung. They're all strung to the wall. Let's go up there and take a look at that. See, right there. So yes, three inch floor boiler, Renai instant hot water. And then over here will be the forced air furnace, which we don't have yet. And those will be two inches as well. And then all of that will end up in the attic right here. And I'll go through and find a way to push them all through the roof when the metal's on. I'm gonna wait till then and put all the elbows on and everything. So that's good. We're making good progress. This wall is gonna be well used. We planned for that. That's why we made a two by six wall there. So smart thinking guys. I'm glad you told me to do that. I feel like this is a scene out of Interstellar with the patterns on the floor. Someone trying to tell me something. Have you guys seen that movie? It's a good movie, I like that movie. Anyways, yeah, it's still snow coming in. Look at the sunroom. <laughs> it's called the snow room for now. The snow room. That's just the way the wind was blowing and it's got gaps all along there. All that snow blows up and ends up in here. But that's okay, we'll get it taken care of eventually. So, windows are still holding on. We do have a couple replacements to do. This one showed up cracked. It's got a crack from the bottom up to the top and then there's one down below as well. But um, it's covered under warranty and everything. It's considered a handling fracture or whatever. I don't know. It came that way, so it wasn't our fault. So it'll be taken care of. We'll get that fixed when the time comes. So the builders are off hunting this week. And uh, they're not going to be back till next week, so it's kind of quiet in here. And yeah, it's cold. Big reason about wanting to do a walkout basement. So you can carry big things right into the basement. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Easy as that. Simple. There you are. Hey, buddy. You made it. Is that going to be a fun run for you? Huh? Is that going to be a fun run from you? Ran all the way from my parents' place. Well, I guess it's still my place. The farmyard all the way here. Oh, he's back outside. All right, he wants to be out there. Back and forth he's going to be. Back and forth. What a mess. Who was in here last? Oh, got this all set up. See how I had to twist it like this? Well, I originally put the orientation of the two lines for the water from the cistern in the 20 some pounds of pressure I always have to have the pump on this wall. And then I changed plans and said, you know, I don't want it on that wall. I want the pump on that wall because this wall is going to be the water softener. So 
I'm putting the pump here. It's going to be elevated right here. Pressure is going to come up, come back over, come over, and then it's going to come up here into my pressure tank, which is going to have a shelf. I'm going to build a big shelf up here. Stand's going to hold all this. And then it's going to also come across here into the water softener, and then across one inch pecs all the way over, up and around, or however down to this wall here, which when I get the plumber on site, he's going to figure out exactly how he want to set the house up for all the house plumbing, the potted water. But this is a nice wall to put the pump and pressure tank on. And these walls are nice and strong, three quarter inch plywood with ICF uh, walls with screws put in all over the place. I could hang the whole thing on that if I wanted to, no problem. I got the progress so far. Built a stand here. Got the 44 gallon pressure tank mounted. Just gotta get some fittings to finish adapting the inch out of here. And then pump. I, oh, I wish I would have had those straight to begin with, but they're curled, they're poly, they're pretty strong. They can, they can take that twisting, so I spun them a little bit. Got the pump mounted. I'm gonna trim off this corner a little bit so it doesn't stick out. So oh, that should be pretty good. What do you guys think? Good? Yeah. Alright. Well, I'm just waiting on parts. We can get this together.